Hey everybody, I'm Stefan, the All-In Nerd, and I'm finally back with another proper update for you guys. It was some time ago, but I'm now I'm back, and if you've been following me on any social media, at least you'll know that I haven't been slacking. And I wanted to have some pieces properly finished before doing this more in-depth update. So, in this update here, we'll be focusing most on my finished gloves and helmet. So let's go. And I say that they're finished now, but if I would get some time over in the end, there are some things that I might want to change or upgrade. But it's only 189 days left, so let's get going. Firstly, I thought I had most of the pieces printed correctly. But after doing some fitting, I realized that either I need to start skipping leg day, or I may have some problems wearing my thigh pieces. Right now, it's not so much wiggle room to talk about, so I might need to reprint them. The shins and calves is quite a tight fit as well, but maybe I can work around it. And another thing that have come up is that the 3D files I bought is for the Mark II. But well, that shouldn't be a problem, since the only difference between the Mark II and Mark III is the paint job. Wrong. Apparently all these holes that's on most parts, which did make me wonder when I started printing actually. That's just something that's found on the Mark II. And there was a Mark III alternative on the website that I just missed. I guess I was just in a rush to start printing. So now I need to cover up all these holes and sand them down before I continue. My usage of the filament is up to about 17 kilos right now, and I still have some pieces to print. The cod piece is printed and have been put together. Now I just need to decide how to cut it up again to see if I can wear it. This one could be too small as well if I'm unlucky. Hope not. But back to the gloves. In the last update I said that I finally got the size right for the fingers. But yeah, I knew nothing. You know nothing, Dolin nerd. They were still too small, so yet again I needed to reprint them. I went back to printing them with a filament printer instead of my resin printers. Sure, it was some extra work sanding the fingers. Again. But I feel like the PLA prints is sturdier than my resin prints. Even though I use Tenacious from Soriatech, which makes the resin prints more durable. While I was printing the new fingers I also fixed some more silicone textures and I sewed them onto the left glove. Now I knew somewhat how to do it, so the result turned out a lot better. And I got the color to match the right glove. But I'm not loving the color. It's a bit too bright. I might do them in a darker red. And the silicone got a bit ripped on the right hand from all the testing with the two small finger pieces. So this one might need to be redone anyway. So we'll see if there's time. Making full gloves in this texture would look really good. But I'm not sure how to do that, and the hands would get quite warm and sweaty with no ventilation. Before painting I needed to design which kind of color to use. This was tricky, and I couldn't get my hands on the accurate color. The Nissan Merlot Red. And after a while I found these two colors in a local store. I did a test with a black and a bright grey primer to see the difference. And I liked the result with the black primer best, to get a bit of a darker tone. Now it was time for some paint. So I applied some black primer and two layers of red. And I had decided that I wanted the suit to have a weathered look. So some battle damages and wear and tear had to be painted on. To get some darker and grimier look in the joints and crevices, I used a dark shade called Nolnoil, Oil, a medium popular when painting miniature models. To paint the scratches, I dipped a worn brush in some metallic paint. And then I brushed off the excess paint on a paper towel, so I wouldn't apply too much. Then I gently started to brush on the edges of the parts. A bit more where it looked like parts could be scratching each other, and a whole lot more where I decided that the gloves got struck by something. Less is more, they say, but it's hard to stop when you start painting. It was such a fun paint job, and I think I did a decent job. And the paints I used was also something that I normally use for my miniature painting. Lead Belcher and Stormhost Silver. But I guess that using some paint from a spray can would work as well. Just spraying some in the cap, and then you can start brushing. Before assembling the fingers and attaching them to the palms, it was time to put on a couple of layers of varnish to protect the scratchy paint job. I wouldn't want to scratch my scratchy gloves, would I? Then I needed to join the fingers together, so they wouldn't just fall off. I used some elastic band. It was a bit wide, so I cut it in half. Some hot glue later, and the fingers are attached to the palm. But it was a bit wobbly, so I decided to try out attaching more elastic bands. And that came out so much better. Now it was time to fix the repulsors. I decided to use two old Arduino Minis that I used for my old Iron Man suit 10 years ago. You can still get these, but they're not made by Arduino anymore. 
there's better circuit boards to use nowadays anyway. As for the repulsor lights, I'm using these NeoPixels. A circuit board with 7 RGB LEDs that is a perfect size. Since the Arduino Mini circuit board was old, it demanded a bit of fiddling and extra pieces to get the code onto the board. But after some trial and error, and a USB to TTL converter, I finally got the code uploaded and working. I downloaded and printed these NeoPixel brackets for the palms. They're designed by Plentiful Props 3D and has a great fit. After this, go and check out his really cool Iron Man build here on YouTube. After some warping of the palms, the brackets were a bit too big to fit, but after a bit of heating with the heating gun, the brackets got a perfect fit as well. The NeoPixels can be screwed straight into the bracket. And to trigger the repulsor lights, I decided to use a simple tilt switch. So now whenever I tilt my hands, the light turns on or off. Nice and easy. But I might want to add some code to the board and use another trigger so the light can get some, some flickering or some intense burst of light before settling. If there is time. And here's how my finished gloves look right now. But enough about gloves now. On to the helmet. The plan was to use an Arduino Nano with a USB-C connection. But I had some problems getting the power working, so I switched to an Arduino Nano with a USB Mini B connection. And it worked without problem. First I was going to use an adapter board to connect the Nano, and simply attach all the cables with screw connections. And in theory it was all really nice and simple, but in reality it just took up too much space in the helmet. The board was resting on the top of my head, and there wasn't enough room to place it in the back of the helmet. So I had to scrap that idea, and solder all the cables straight into the Arduino board. And I got it working, but if I had to do it again, I would put in some JST connections straight away. So it would be easy to replace the LED eyes or choose another kind of button for the example without having to resolder some cables. After getting all the electronics working in the helmet, it was getting closer to the paint job, but I still needed to print and attach the T. The pieces were really small, so I decided to print them with my resin printer to get them as smooth as possible straight away. Then it was just to remove them from the supports and glue them on. Quite fiddly for sure. Now it was time for paint. So I disassembled the helmet to paint the parts individually. First some sandable primer and some more sanding. And since I was going to spray some gold as well, I needed to do the same primer test for the gold as I did for the red. This time I decided on a brighter primer, but the result didn't differ that much actually. Apparently when masking painted parts off to put on another color, the already painted one could come off when removing the masking tape. So I needed to do a test for that as well. I had two different kinds of masking tape. Frog tape and coxy tape. I taped them onto the already painted red test piece, and then I sprayed it with gold. The coxy tape actually left some marks when being removed, or the gold penetrated the tape. Hard to say, but the frog tape worked like a charm. So let's do some spraying. There we go, all nice and shiny. But that's not what I want, so let's scratch it up a bit. Just like the gloves, I'm using a worn brush with a little bit of metallic paint and gently brush it onto the outstanding parts. After going over it once, I started to put on the paint a bit more aggressively on some specific areas. I also did some tries with a metallic pen. It worked quite alright, but the strokes came out a bit too wide for my liking. So I think it will be a better use on the body than on the helmet and gloves. And here I also used the shade Null Oil in the crevices, and some Agrax Earth shade in the holes on the gold. And these are the holes that shows us that it's a Mark II model. Will I redo it? If there is time, we'll see, we'll see. And when putting the helmet together again, I wanted to try and get a button into the chin that I've seen more people do, so the helmet won't have to be connected to the rest of the suit. 
I mean, why complicate it with having cables down to the fingers if you can solve it all easily with a chin? Later on, I'm going to fix it, so I'll control it just by putting my fingertips together using a reed switch and a magnet. But to get that sorted, I need to get the hands fixed. And I needed a bracket for the button, so I designed one in on shape and printed it. Then after attaching it in the chin, I drew some wires back to the Arduino board. And how did it all turn out? Well, you be the judge. You can barely see me move my chin when I press the button. And that's where I'm at right now. As I said, it's 189 days left, but time sure goes fast, so I need to be productive with the time I have left. Thanks for watching, guys, and may the nerd be with you.